just put some more Payne's grey into burnt sienna just to get a nice rich dark brown see how nice and rich that is and some of these trees here obviously are still wet from before and dropping this in is just going to make even more texture and I'm just going to go for it a little bit here with just paint as grey on these outlying trees I'm just going to make them a little bit darker And of course that makes you go all around, doesn't it? Now I'm thinking, should these be darker? I'm just reading Linda White Beatty. You're quite welcome. And yeah, I agree, there is a nice mood coming, isn't there? But they're absolutely, they're everywhere. No doubt they're everywhere all over the country or wherever, but I just noticed them this, this morning. They were absolutely incredible. Right now, around the base of the trees, it's going to be dark, but we've got the, the dafts kind of in front. But I'm just going to make a line at that point. And again, do you see how the textures of this paint is reacting? So while all this is now drying, I'm going to show you another technique with my hake brush, which is squeeze up all that excess. Just get some tissue, dry the brush, and then uh, try it again on your hand. You see how it's gone into like a a bush that's what we want and all this paint that I've got out all this water and stuff on the plate I'm gonna mix it all together because I'll clean this in a minute and at the top literally I just start dabbing not all over, not every spot, because we want the sky to come through. But rather than paint every leaf, or think where do I paint the leaves, or this, that, other, just use your brush like that. And as we come nearer to the sun, which is here, it gets lighter. Now this is the lightest, this is the lightest it'll be because I'll darken it up if you understand what I mean. So we make kind of a halo around the sun. We 
don't get if you if you try this, don't get carried away with doing too much because you lose that you know that nice effect that we're after of the sky behind. Because once you get an effect like this and think, oh, that's great, that you tend to get carried away and do too much. Right, so I think I'm quite happy now the way this is this is going. We've got just run through quick. We've got the sky behind. We've got the trees in front. We've got a meadow full of daffodils in the mid ground. The trees at this end, which is kind of like a, a thin bank of trees, and then the the path here and the daffodils going crazy. It's over. If anybody knows the local area, it's um, Primrose Hill which is between Towin and Abigail, near the A55 actually. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry a little bit before I start, because we'll do some more of that, um, that hate work for the, the leaves. Now I'm gonna attempt, I say attempt, because I'm not sure I'm gonna handle it yet. We need to get the, the green, Obviously, because the daffodils, they're on like a lawn. It's not a lawn, it's, it's, it's under the trees, but it's kind of like a part that's been cleared. I don't know whether the deer eat the trees there or something. I don't know what it is. So I've cleaned a part of my saucer. If I was doing this in my own time, I'd go and clean that properly and get clean water, but I don't want to leave you hanging about. So I've got a handful of tissue, I've got some blue out already, and I need some more lemon yellow. And what we're going to do first is decide that our daffodils will go right the way up here, I think, and right the way up there. So now this process, what we're going to do, I'm just going to check out how dry these are. They're still wet through these. So I'll get my uh, hairdryer and I'll just clean this area. Sorry, I'll just dry this area now. I'll also show you another little technique, you know, pushing the paint upwards with the hairdryer. So give me two minutes. See you soon. <laughs> Right, so it's not perfectly dry, but it'll stop that running into the green because I want it to be a nice clean green that we do. And the way I'm going to do it, I'm still trying to make my mind up the way I'm going to do it. And what I will do is make the green up first. So water, loads of yellow, because I want it to be a really bright summery green the first wash some blue you'll notice in my palette by the way there's no green i don't i never use green paint um i like to just make it from what i've got in the seven color palette and you can see there straight away we've got a lovely lovely summery green now what i'm going to try and do now i know we put masking fluid on this yellow earlier but we didn't do we didn't do it massively detailed so the green 
is going to be put on in this this kind of a, a way you know not everywhere just in bits and bats because we want that yellow to shine through and the white we've left some white as well don't forget and of course the next trick we'll use later is by putting in a few few daffodil fronds quite detailed and, and they'll give the effect that all this is quite detailed let's take it up there all right so you see now that's bringing the foreground forward all of a sudden because we've got some definition in the foreground that's coming forward isn't it and the more i look at these trees i quite like that ethereal look of them we might even just leave them like that we'll see anyway again like i always say it's the beauty of watercolor isn't it you can change my picture i can do what i want there's no but i don't think anybody's going to give me a hard time if it doesn't work out well i hope you're not <laughs> So there's the first wash of green. And again, just cleaning my brush and getting it into 20 brushes. And you can just then start suggesting maybe a few wispy bits of grass. But at this stage, you just what you want to keep is that nice, fresh layer underneath. So I'm going to stop on that. And I'm now going to make my mind up whether to darken the trees or not. 